Speaking of, uh, our ESPN NFL prognosticator and fantasy football analyst, Mike Clay, is yeah. here now. Perhaps he can project things that are actually going to happen this weekend. Mike, and let's start with the Indianapolis Colts and their wide receiver, Michael Pittman. He's on a three-game streak of scoring at least one touchdown. This weekend, he faces the two and six Jags. And so, why might you have concern? Yeah, so, I mean, first of all, you had a great opportunity there to bring the Mike Clay, Mike Clay, Mike Clay chance, like the Mike White chance when he oh. walks into the locker room every Shoot. day that they're, mm -hmm. they're reporting. So, Shoot. you know, I was, I was hoping for that. I was getting pumped up for this segment, but, uh, you know, a little, little bit of end. a letdown there. Let but us, anyway, let let's us talk about – Let us get ready for it. <laughs> we'll do it at yeah. the end, Mike Clay. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> but anyway, I can, I can settle on talking some, uh, some wide receiver cornerback matchups here. So, yeah, some mild concern here for Michael Pittman going up against Jacksonville. Look, this is a team that hasn't been dominant against wide receivers. Honestly, they haven't been great overall. Seventh most fantasy points allowed to that position this season. The seventh most to the perimeter, which is where Pittman lines up around 80% of the time. The thing is, though, he may draw the Shaq Griffin shadow. And Griffin has shadowed quite a – Quite a few times over the past few weeks, A.J. Brown held to 38 yards, D.K. Metcalf to 43 yards, 85 yards for Stephon Diggs last week. So he's done a pretty nice job. All in all, slight downgrade here for, uh, for Michael Pittman. But, I mean, if you have him in fantasy, you're still going to start him, of course. All right, so A.J. Brown and the Titans taking on the Saints. Brown had had a couple of big games, but uh, even though the Titans get a big win over the Ram Rams, he was kind of invisible in that one. So what's your level of concern for A.J. Brown? Yeah, so I have some, uh, some mixed emotions here. I'm in a glass case of emotion, as Ron uh, Burgundy <laughs> would say, because there's some positives here and there's some negatives here. Uh, look, the guy has been fantastic as of late, the number five fantasy receiver since week five, a huge target share. But Marshawn Lattimore will shadow him on his perimeter routes, and he has been terrific. Remember, Devontae Adams in week one, five for 56 in that game. Terry McLaurin, four for 46. D.K. Metcalf had the 84-yard touchdown, otherwise had, otherwise had a 12-yard catch in that game with Lattimore on him. And then Mike Evans, two for 48. So he's been terrific this season. However, on the other side, he's in the slot 40% of the time. And overall, the Saints have had the fourth most fantasy points to receivers this season, including the fifth most to the slot. Brown also outstanding against man coverage. No defense runs more man coverage than the Saints. So some pluses here, some minuses here, maybe some mild concern. But when all is said and done, it would not surprise me if he got loose for some big plays. Interesting. Okay, so, so mild concern perhaps if you are a Cowboys fan. Not so much, though, if you're a Broncos fan who took care of the Cowboys last weekend. And so let's talk about Cortland Sutton here, Mike. He had some not great numbers, let's just put it that way, over the last three weeks or so. But he's going to look to bounce back this weekend against the Eagles. Do you have a level of concern for Cortland Sutton? I do. Look, I do this wide receiver cornerback column every year. I've been doing it for probably going on almost a decade now. And this is one of the most high, the highest levels of concern that I've had for a mm. matchup. So let's call this one massive concern here for Cortland Sutton, a player I like a lot. But uh, check this out. First of all, he has struggled when Jerry Judy has played in three games with Judy this season. 12.3 fantasy points scored. That's not average. That's total in those three games. And then look who Darius Slay has shadowed this season. DJ Moore at 5 for 42. Mike Evans was under 30 yards. So is Henry Ruggs. Mike uh, Williams last week had two for 58. Slay has been terrific. The Eagles overall fourth fewest fantasy points to receivers, the third fewest to the, uh, the perimeter, and the fewest to Darius Slay's side of the field. So uh, Slay will be on him about uh, – Sutton lines up in the perimeter 87% of the time. Mm -hmm. So it will be almost every play in this game. I'm downgrading Sutton big time in this one. I think J Jerry Judy will be fine. But Sutton, man, this is a, a brutal matchup for him. My clay, my clay, my clay. Is that my how we do clay, it? My clay, my clay. There we go. I'll let you be a professional. I'm just chanting while yeah. you say my clay. And he's shaking clay, and he's really excited. Clay, All right, my clay, clay, thank you so much for the insight. Clay, as always, we'll be watching these matchups. Keep going. I'm going to see how long you can do this. My clay, Bye, my clay. Bye, my clay. My clay. Our week for 10. The weekend. Thank you. Our week 10 Monday Night Football matchup is an NFC West rivalry game. It's Matthew Stafford and OBJ. And the Rams, they're in San Francisco to take on Debo Sanders. Samuel, the NFL's second leading receiver, by the way, and the 49ers, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.